Only in New York can you make six figures and still feel poor AF. I'm Tay, I am a full-time corporate lawyer, part-time content creator, momager to a dog influencer, and small business owner. And those are just the hacks that I'm wearing today. Welcome to the Corporate Creator Vlogmas episode 11. I added this topic to my list of Vlogmas episodes that I had in my lineup because I needed 25 new topics. Prior to Vlogmas, I had posted a few corporate lawyer, day in the life vlogs, and a few apartment tours. On these apartment tours, a number of people obviously loved our new apartment. I mean, I'm obsessed with it too, but I did receive a few questions about how much I pay in rent and then also why I pay so much. Even on gloomy, rainy days like today, there is no place that I would rather live in New York City. Before you say, yes, I know what, what I pay in rent, I could easily afford a mansion anywhere else except maybe SF. Energy here is unlike any place I've ever been in my entire life. And I'm the type of person who really thrives in chaos and high energy situations and environments. So I really thrive in New York City. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat this. At the end of the day, living here is expensive AF. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a week of normal and realistic spending in my life. Life, but I'm gonna start with my monthly expenses and then I will actually walk you through Sunday through Saturday of this prior week. I'm really glad I did this video because it really forced me to become so much more aware of how much I was spending. That is still way too hot. Okay. Before we get started, I wanted to make it clear that this is a personal choice, how much I'm spending. And I'm sure many people would think that I'm not spending this much on rent or various things, but it is a personal choice. And these are things that make me happy and I'm not hurting anyone. And just as a word to the wise, if there are other creators that you see sharing how much they spend on various things, be kind to them. They're being vulnerable and they're putting this information out there and it is nobody's place to judge anyone else for how much they're spending. It's also helpful for you to understand a little bit more about me and how I was brought up. I would say that my family was pretty much upper middle class. I went to private school my entire life. They paid for my education all the way up through college. However, as much as I do have spoiled brat tendencies, I was not spoiled at all as a child in terms of receiving extravagant gifts or clothing or any of that stuff. My family invested in my education and I'm so glad they did. And as an adult, I'm the same way. I do not splurge on going out or traveling or buying fancy clothing or handbags or shoes. Rather, I splurge on things that I'm going to use every single day and that will have a lasting impact on my life or my well-being. So for example, biggest expense is obviously rent, but it's because I work from home and I work a lot. So of course I'm gonna invest in making sure that my day-to-day -day experience working long hours is enjoyable as it can be. Another major expense for me was our wedding. It was the best day of my life and everyone that went to it had the same sentiments. We postponed our wedding due to the pandemic because everyone in 2020 did the same thing. But not only that, the exact day in 2020 that we had originally scheduled our wedding, our original wedding venue was destroyed in the glass fires that happened in California. It took a toll on me going through the pandemic working so hard to pay for this wedding, to have everything taken away, and to have to wait another year. Definitely went a little bit overboard, but I don't regret it. It was totally worth it, and I'm still reliving those wonderful moments. I'm also that person who won't spend a single cent for over a week, and then randomly drop 4K on a couch because that actually happened this week. Our biggest expense, as you can imagine, is rent. And we are paying rent at not one, but two apartments. At our current apartment, our rent is $8,995 a month. And at our old apartment, our rent is $6,191.50. Our grand total for rent at these two apartments is $15,186.50. And you might be wondering why in the world would we ever do this? It's actually because my husband, who is a director, is filming his first feature film at our old apartment. Long story short, it just kind of worked out. We got this apartment currently. It was too amazing of an opportunity to pass up, so we obviously just took it and our leases overlapped by three months. So it kind of just worked out when my husband wrote the script. He kind of had our first apartment in mind, so it just made sense for him to shoot there. Paying two Manhattan apartment rents for even one month is a lot, and multiple months has been very, very challenging and difficult, but 
There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm excited for him. I'm really proud of him that he's getting to do this. One reason I waited so long to tell you guys that he is a director is I knew you guys would think, oh my God, that is why all of her YouTube vlogs are so amazing. Her husband is the one directing it. No, don't even think it. It is not true. My husband has no time for my vlogs. I am directing everything. Just making that clear. We're actually going to be attending his rap party for his movie tonight. I'm really excited to meet his cast and all of the people that he's been spending all of his time with for the past, seems like, over a month. If you're wondering why he's never around, it's not because he doesn't exist. He does exist. It's just that he's been at our old apartment. I would just like to say, I'm that bitch because I retired my husband. What? No. Let's say it again with emphasis. I'm that chick because I retired my husband. Just kidding, but not. That's a boss flex, 1000%. Let's be honest, that was just a really wise investment on my part because I'm getting 50% so when he's rich and famous, I will be rich and famous too. So win, win, win. Moving on to utilities. This again is extremely embarrassing and I would just like to give myself credit. I thought that because I retired my husband, my role was just to bring in the money but not be responsible for managing it. I was mistaken. Perfect example. I don't know how much we currently pay in electricity at our new apartment. And I asked my husband this today and this was his response. So this is quite concerning and I don't know what's going on here. I really should investigate. But at our old apartment, we pay approximately $155 in electricity and utilities. We also pay a $100 amenities fee to use the gym and the lounge area. Luckily, we do not have an amenities fee at our current apartment, which seems insane because our amenities here are next level. In addition to utilities, we pay for a host of subscriptions. We have YouTube TV, Netflix, HBO Max. I don't, I'm not gonna bore you with all of this stuff. We also have Verizon for Wi-Fi, and we also have Spectrum here. We have a lot of expenses, so here's a list of everything that we're paying for. I don't really need to go grocery shopping much because I have Saqqara. I would say a fair estimate is probably 150 a week on my meals at Saqqara, and that can get me anywhere from four to six meals. For the most part, I would say that it's pretty reasonable, and these are high quality, delicious, and very nutritious vegan meals. So. To pay on average 150 for Saqqara meals that are delivered that I don't have to really prepare anything, it's a pretty good deal. Now my husband does the grocery shopping for himself and Gus. He confirmed that maybe it's around 100 to 200 a week. We also do prepare my dog's food at home, which has been really amazing for us because we'd had issues with Gus getting sick on various different dog foods. So just like myself, when I'm eating meals, I like to know how they're prepared. So even more so with Gus, he's my everything. He can't afford to have him getting sick, so we prepare his meals at home and he loves it. He loves knowing that he's eating human meals. He's not hes not a dog, so it's not a cable house, no. Now on to student loans. I pay $1,562.49 each month. It is what it is. I don't need to go into my total balance because it is depressing AF. And this is still pretty high considering that my parents finance all of my college education and I received a full scholarship to law school so that this amount that I'm paying off really is only comprised of money that I took out when I was in law school to cover my living expenses and also to cover one year of a post JD specialized law degree which I did not receive a scholarship for. I have degrees and degrees are not cheap. I have a number of recurring business expenses, but I'm only gonna be providing you with a very high level summary of these expenses because I'm gonna be going through all of these expenses in greater detail in a future vlog. Just the top business expenses that I'm paying, I've actually reduced a number of them because I've pivoted my business a little bit more to focus more so on content creation again. I stress how amazing TubeBuddy has been for me with YouTube being fast. YouTube optimization tool, I cannot recommend it. Another big thing that is a non-negotiable is epidemic sound. I love music, I've talked about this before in a prior vlog. Music is so critical to me. For that reason, I've invested in epidemic sound subscription so that I can have the best music for my YouTube vlog. It's on average, I'm probably spending around $500 in expenses for my business each month. I just finished going through my weekly expenses and wow, I, oh my gosh, okay. 
So let's start with Sunday because I did start the week off pretty well, but then it went downhill after that. On Sunday, I spent a total of zero dollars because I was at home most of the day filming Vlogmas episodes and also premiering for a live session for my membership community for ambitious, multi-passionate women called The Culture. Monday, I got a little crazy because I unexpectedly took advantage of the great weather in New York and I decided to film my midtown holiday spots to visit and because I had looked back on my downtown holiday spots to visit and realized that I didn't like the way my winter coat photographed in that content, I decided to buy myself a new coat. And my husband was the one who suggested going to Uniqlo, which turned into the best idea ever. They were having a great sale and I bought not one, but three coats. They were a steal, so each coat was on sale for $69.90. So for the three of them, it came to $209.70. I also paid for the subway uptown and also downtown, so that was $275 each way. So that brings my grand total of spending on Monday to $215.20. Moving on to Tuesday, we are back on the positive side. I spent a total of zero dollars at home and I was so busy with work and filming my Vlogmas episodes that I did not spend any money. On Wednesday, we are on a streak. Another day of not spending any money. On Wednesday, I would have normally been charged for my Saqqara meals for the upcoming week, but as I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, I neglected to update my credit card that I had on file that had expired. Zero dollar spent was not intentional. Thursday, we went from literally zero to four thousand dollars. You had to buy your replacement couch. So to take advantage of some specials that they were running on their furniture, I pulled the trigger and I spent $43. Oh my god, okay. I pulled the trigger and I spent $4,308.18 for a new couch. With the couch purchase and all of our other furniture purchases, for the most part, at least the ones that we are getting from either Crate and Barrel or West Elm, they are going on credit because we do have store cards with both of those furniture places. On Friday, I technically didn't spend anything, but I did take an Obey Fitness workout class and I totally forgot that I paid for a year membership. It's out to $1.99 for the year. Technically, it's approximately $4 a week. So just to make things interesting, I'll say that I spent $4 on Friday for this workout class that I took. Running out last week is Saturday where I ran errands in the cold, but I did not take the subway. So that brought my total for transportation to $0. In addition to that, I spent a whopping 58 cents. Yeah, I know, real splurge. To get two documents printed out at Walgreens, I paid a $15 copay to get my prescriptions. And I used my FSA card, which I talk about in an earlier vlog. So that brings my total for Saturday to $15.58. So we kind of ended the week on a high note, which brings our total for the week to $4,542.96. Now that amount excludes rent and utilities. Oh my god, okay. You guys asked for this. Once I tack on the weekly breakout for rent for two apartments, it's to be technical, it's $3,796.63. Drum roll, you add how much I spent this week with how much we paint and rent for two apartments broken down by week. The grand total for this week, oh my gosh, giving me anxiety. You asked for this. $8,339.59. And this is excluding utilities and all of those monthly subscriptions because just seeing that number already gave me enough anxiety. And if you do want to go ahead and do the math yourself, knock yourself out, I think this gives you a fairly good estimate of how much we are paying. $3,300 this past week. Wow. I need a moment. As soon as I said I needed a moment, he came over here. It's not dinner time. I honestly, the weather and it's getting so dark so early. It's throwing Gus off. Oh, you're doing yoga? Okay. It's throwing him off and he thinks it's dinner time. Bubba, you have an hour. It's not dinner time yet. Okay, before Gus starts barking again, I'm gonna wrap this up. So thanks for watching this vlog. This was very enlightening. I'm glad someone asked, or maybe no one asked, but I'm glad I did this because 
I needed to see how much money is going out the door. Now I'm wondering how much money do I actually make? Cause this is a lot of money going out, but you know what? That's for another day. In tomorrow's vlog, I'm going to be giving you guys a Vlogmas midway check-in because there's so much that I've been able to learn looking at my analytics from posting, what is today? 11 days of vlogs straight. Definitely learning a lot about what's working, what's not working, and I'll be sharing all of that with you. I'm sharing how I am workshopping things in real time to improve my vlogs going forward. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. And until then, go binge all of my shorts and all of the earlier episodes of Vlogmas, and I will see you tomorrow.